Kobe Bryant put winning over everything. He was an asshole, a hopeless romantic, and an obsessive maniac. But how good was he actually? Early life and road to the NBA. Kobe's dad may have been a millionaire, but this didn't make Kobe's life easy. Like Will Smith, Kobe was born in Philadelphia, and his father, Joe Jellybean Bryant, played for the 76ers. After eight years in the NBA, Jellybean moved his family to Italy to play basketball abroad. Kobe was just six years old, and he didn't speak a lick of Italian. Switching schools every time his father changed teams didn't help. And the cherry on top? He was the only black kid at all of them. This shaped Kobe as a person and a player, struggling to fit in. He always gravitated towards basketball. He learned to play in isolation for hours. Basketball became his safe space, and where he could prove himself against the kids who didn't accept him. When he wasn't playing, he watched NBA games on VHS and dreamt of becoming an NBA player. When Kobe was 13, Bryant's family returned to Philadelphia. Once again, he was alienated because he didn't know American slang. He would silence those who teased him on the basketball court. Bryant was obsessive about the game from a very early age and worked on his basketball skills tirelessly. As an upperclassman, he played all five positions for Lower Marion High School and averaged 31 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 blocks. Senior year, he led Lower Marion to their first state championship in 53 years and was named Naismith High School Player of the Year and a McDonald's All-American. There was a huge hype about where he'd go to college. Then, Kobe surprised everybody. Bryant organized a press conference and announced that he would skip college and take his talents to the NBA. Kobe was just the sixth player in history to go to the NBA directly from high school. So naturally, NBA executives were reluctant to draft him. But after he destroyed Michael Cooper in practice, Lakers GM Jerry West knew that he was watching the best pre-draft workout he'd ever seen and that Kobe was the best player in the 1996 draft. West was so determined to draft Kobe that he finessed the Charlotte Hornets into drafting Brian and trading him to LA for Vlade Divac. Brash youngster. I'm Kobe Bryant, and I'm not going to get punked by anybody. That was the first thing Kobe said at his first training camp practice. He let the other Lakers know he's no ordinary rookie. Even as a skinny young kid, Kobe was fearless from the get-go, relentless in every practice and every game. Kobe entered the 1997 Slam Dunk Contest and won. His teammates lovingly called him Showboat, but it wasn't all good. In his first playoff series, Bryant famously shot four air balls in overtime against Utah. By his second season, he was already averaging 15 points per game. He even became the youngest all-star starter in NBA history, but didn't start on his own team. His most memorable moments from 98 were playing against Black Jesus. MJ was impressed by Kobe on how he would unapologetically ask for advice and wasn't starstruck by Jordan. Kobe went on to finish second in the sixth man of the year voting. But come playoffs, the Lakers would repeat history and lose to Utah. In 1999, Kobe finally became a permanent starter and averaged 20 points per game. Though this wouldn't stop the Lakers from getting swept in the playoffs. The Lakers Lake Show knew something had to change, so they appointed Phil Jackson as the new head coach. Laker Dynasty In 1998, Shaq and Kobe had their first fight, and O'Neal nearly decapitated Bryant. However, Phil Jackson was called the Zen Master for a reason. He challenged O'Neal to get into the best shape of his life, and Shaq dominated like never before. Kobe was an all-star, averaging 22, 6, and 5, and the Lakers were firing on all cylinders. They went on to win 67 games in the regular season, which was the fifth best result in NBA history. Shaq won the MVP trophy, Kobe was named to the All-NBA second team, and was the youngest player ever to be selected in the All-Defense first team. But once again, playoffs were no cakewalk for the Lakers. Lakers. It was the fourth quarter of Game 7 in the Western Finals, and the Lakers were losing by 15 against Portland. Everyone thought it was the end for the Lakers, until Kobe and Shaq powered one of the best comebacks in NBA history. Bryant was phenomenal in the clutch, with his crossover on Scottie Pippen, and the alley-oop to Shaq clinched the game and the series. But their work wasn't finished. They still had the finals against the Pacers, and in Game 2, it happened. Jalen Rose had deliberately put his feet under Kobe in Game 2 and twisted his ankle. Bryant was forced to miss Game 3, and Indiana comfortably won that game. What the Pacers didn't realize is Kobe is one resilient SOB. He returned in Game 4 with a vengeance. When Shaq got ejected, Kobe put the team on his shoulders and carried them to a win. The Lakers would break the Pacers in six games, and Kobe jumped in Shaq's arms to celebrate their first ever title together. However, things never stayed good for long between Shaq and Kobe. After the first title, Shaq was content. So content, he spent his summer eating burgers and drinking pina coladas. Kobe, on the other hand, spent the summer in the gym, so when he had seen Shaq in the preseason 
season out of shape. Kobe lost his mind, and their feud started again. But Shaq's laziness gave Kobe more opportunities to dominate. Brian averaged a career-high 28.5 points per game. And thankfully, once the playoffs came, Shaq was the athletic beast he was the year before, and the Lakers were unstoppable. They swept all three series in the Western Conference. Who would stop them from doing the same in the finals? Well, he was small, but he was a problem. His name was Allen Iverson. AI mercilessly dropped 48 in the Staples Center, stepped over Tyron Lu, and won game one for the Sixers. But Shaq and Kobe took AI's disrespect personally, and they couldn't let that slide. The Lakers came back and won the next four games to clinch their second consecutive title. Their 15-1 playoff run was the best in history, until 2017, when the Warriors went 16-1. In 2002, Kobe led the Lakers in assists, and he averaged 25 per game. Bamba made the first All-NBA team for the first time in his career, plus the first team All-Defense. He also won the All-Star Game MVP, and the Lakers continued to dominate the opposition, until they reached the Conference Finals in the Sacramento Kings. The Kings were the best team throughout the season, and Chris Webber was playing at the MVP level. The Kings took a 3-2 lead in the series, and to be honest, they would have probably won Game 6 too, had it not been for one of the worst refereeing jobs in NBA history. The refs stole that win for the Lakers, but LA won Game 7 fair and square. In the finals, they quickly dismantled the Nets in four games. Shaq was the finals MVP for the third time in a row, and Kobe became the youngest player ever with three championships. Fallout with Shaq after 2002, Kobe was one of the best offensive players in the game. He knew when to shoot and when to pass. The problem was, sometimes he didn't want to pass. Kobe being one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA, always guarded the best opposing guard in the clutch. He understood the game tactically. He had all the moves and counter moves. In 2003, he dropped 55 on Jordan. He averaged over 32 points in the playoffs, but the Spurs were too strong that year. The only thing that Kobe had not fully mastered was emotional intelligence and being a leader. In 2004, his beef with Shaq became unbearable. Both Shaq and Kobe acted childishly, but Kobe did Shaq dirty after discussing Shaq's marriage with the media. Ironic, because he was also going through a court case in Colorado, which proved his own infidelity. Craziest part is at the same time as his trial, Kobe was playing in the playoffs. It takes a cold-blooded individual to be facing a lengthy jail sentence and still go out to perform as well as he did. The Lakers added Karl Malone and Gary Payton, so everybody thought they would be crowned champions again. But Kobe beefed with both Shaq and Malone. The lack of chemistry showed its ugly head when it was most important. Kobe was forcing things in the finals against the Pistons. He took by far the most shots on the team, despite hitting only 38% from the field and 17% for three, and the Lakers lost in five games. Something had to change, so Shaq was traded to Miami, and Kobe had the chance to prove that he could win without him. Individual Greatness Kobe was a maniac. For all the kids out there that want to be like Kobe, here's some advice. Don't do it. Because Kobe was one in a billion, he ran himself into the ground to become a perfect basketball player. He was in the gym up to three times a day, and he wouldn't leave practice without making 400 shots. But it was because Kobe was such a maniac that he produced some of the greatest memories for basketball fans around the world. In 2005, he scored 62 points against the Mavs in just three quarters. And three weeks later, he notoriously scored 81 against the Raptors, the second highest scoring game in NBA history. Brian averaged 35 points per game in 05 and 31 in 06. He was in his athletic prime. Kobe led the league in scoring, and his highlights of that era were a thing of beauty. But that same year, the Lakers somehow missed the playoffs, and in 06 and 07, they lost to the Suns in the first round. Despite Mamba's heroics and game winners in the clutch, he still wasn't proven as a true team player or leader. Buenos dias, pal. Kobe's selfishness almost got him traded to Detroit during the 2007-2008 season, but that fell through, and instead, the Lakers traded for Pau Gasol, one of the best European players ever. With the additions of Gasol, Trevor Ariza, and the emergence of Andrew Bynum, the Lakers finally became championship contenders again. LA clinched the number one seed, and Mamba was named the regular season MVP. They dominated the West and made it to the finals against the Boston Celtics. With Tom Thibodeau, a defensive mastermind and his revolutionary ice defense, the Celtics would load up defenders on Kobe in the finals, forcing Bryant to get rid of the ball or take tough shots against multiple defenders. Kobe was the best player in the world at the time, but Boston had a better team that season, and the Celtics won in six games. After winning the 2008 Olympics with Team USA against Spain, Kobe left the gold medal in front of Pau Gasol's locker to rile him up for the season. He needed Pau to be aggressive. He played similar tricks on other teammates and was finally learning to be a leader. Kobe took it upon himself to hang out socially and bond 
bond with his teammates to learn what made them tick. He now knew he couldn't win the title by himself. In 2009, Bryant was playing the best and most mature basketball of his life. He led the Lakers to win the championship and earned the finals MVP award. In 2010, the Lakers made the finals once more and had a chance at revenge against the Celtics. But as usual, there was a problem. Kobe was playing with a bone spur in his ankle and a broken finger on his shooting hand. As you would imagine, he couldn't shoot the ball well. This series, in particular, was pretty ugly. But things were different than they were years ago. Kobe and the Lakers learned to play like a team and took the series to Game 7. Kobe shot 6 from 24, incapable of putting the game away by himself. But with his Mamba mentality, he'd rather die than lose to the Celtics twice. Bryant had 15 rebounds that game, and he was doing everything possible to win. Then in the last minute, Ron Artest would hit a three, and the Lakers prevailed. Kobe got his fifth title that night, and when a reporter asked what the title means for him, Kobe truthfully and sarcastically answered, just got one more than Shaq. Lakers' downfall and Kobe's legacy in 2011 and 2012, Kobe was still his usual self, scoring and trying to win the title at any cost. But the Lakers were once again struggling. So in 2013, they traded for Dwight Howard, and Howard was a terrible fit. It was obvious that Kobe's athleticism was slowly fading. Then, as if things weren't already bad enough, it happened. Kobe snapped his Achilles, the most devastating injury in basketball. Kobe made his two free throws and walked himself off the court like a boss. Frustrated, he cried in the locker room, but he was still determined determined to come back stronger. Thing is, even with the Mamba mentality, after the Achilles came the knee injury. After the knee, it was the shoulder. Kobe was getting older, and in 2016, it was obvious that he couldn't do it anymore. Everything was hurting. That's when Kobe wrote Dear Basketball, his love letter to the sport. It was the best retirement announcement in the history of sports. He opened a door into his beautiful and deep personality, which only a few people knew existed. Kobe had finally let his guard down for the first time in his life. He was no longer an asshole. He was kind. He was jovial. He was giving. The whole NBA gave him a retirement tour and honored his legacy to the game of basketball. Bryant sucked for the majority of that season. I think he dunked the ball maybe once that year. But in the final game of his career, against an opponent who was fighting for a playoff spot, Kobe played one of the best games of his career. This mother effort dropped 60. He literally made every shot in the clutch, with almost no lift in his legs. And just like Jordan inspired him, he became an inspiration to millions of kids around the world who would all yell, Kobe, while throwing their homework in the trash.